Integration is basically just a reverse of differentiations. So let's look at this example. Every day before you go to school, you wear your stocking first, then only you wear your shoes. But do you realize that when you go home, you reverse whatever that you did by take off the shoes first, then only you take off your stocking. So the tell us that even to reverse something, you need to do bottom up. We will take off your shoes first, then only you take off your stocking. By using this concept, we can apply to integrations. Because integration is basically just the reverse of differentiations. If you still remember how to differentiate, we just take the power down, we multiply by the power, and the power reduced by 1. This is how we get 4x power of 3. So differentiation, step number 1, multiply by the power. Step number 2, the power reduced by 1. And I think you are master of it for now. But since we say integration is just the reverse of it, we can use the concept of our stocking just now and try to find the formula for integrations. So we know if you want to integrate, we just reverse it. Step number 1, just now the power reduced by 1. So by right, the power now is supposed to increase by 1. So we said that this one will be step number 1 for integration. How about step number 2? So just now we multiply by the power. So now we're supposed to divide by the power. So let us try to see whether it works or not. So since we have 4x cubed, we want to try to reverse it so that we can get back our original equations. So step number 1, the power got to increase by 1. So 4x power of 3, and we say that the power is going to increase by 1, so we have plus 1. Then we've done step number 1. Step number 2, divide by the power. So over, what is the power now? The power now is eventually 3 plus 1, right? So we divide it by 3 plus 1. So if we compute this now, 4x power of 4, over 4. And if we simplify it, then we left with only x power of 4. And this indeed is the original equations. If you understand this one, congratulations, you already learned how to do integrations. So basically integration is just the reverse of differentiations where we do everything in reverse. We start by increase the power by 1 and we divide by the new power. Let's learn about the integration notations. If you want to integrate something, we always use this curve as sign to mean that we are doing integrations. And it's what we call as the integral symbols. And this A and B is eventually the limit, the limit of our variables here. This is the lower limit and this is the upper limit, which we will learn later on. And the green color one is whatever the function that we're going to integrate and integrate with respect to what variable will be based on the dx here. So this is what we call as the dummy variables, which basically just tell us that what variable that we are integrating. And the big F here is eventually our result of our integrations. And this C here is our constant of integrations. So basically we need to plus C when we have the indefinite integrals. Indefinite means that we have no limit applied to the integrations. If we are doing the limit integrations, or we call it the definite integrations, when we include the upper and lower limit, we wouldn't need to include the constant of integrations. This is because the constant we cancel out and later on we will learn why is that this. Let's learn about indefinite integration, which is basically that we take the integrations without any lower or upper limit. So let's go back to the equation just now. Whenever we want to say that we reverse the differentiation, we call it as the integrations, which we write down as the notation like, we take the integration of these functions, this is eventually the differentiations one, with respect to x, is equivalent to the original equations. So they tell us that if we take the integrations of the differentiation result, if we get back the original equations because that's the reverse of it, right? And sometimes they write at this. They said the integral of the differentiation of these functions with respect to x, they give me the original functions. That's the way of writing. But just remember that the integrals of the differentiations is basically, looks like a cancel out. 
but it's more complex than this. But for now, you can just think of that we cancel out and give us back the original equations whenever the integral meet with differentiations. So let's go for more examples. So if you know how to do the differentiations, if you say that, you will just take down the 2 multiply with it and the power reduced by 1. This is why we have 2x and the differentiation of a constant is just 0. This is why we have the differentiation product is 2x. How about now we have x squared plus 1? So like usual, take down the 2. This is why we have 2x like this. How about now we have x squared plus 0? It's the same thing. We have 2x. But do you realize that all of our differentiated product is 2x? So if you want to carry out the integrations, hmm, that's the problem. Everybody has the same answers. So how I know which one is which one? So let's try it out first. So we know if we want to find the original equation, we just integrate the 2x with respect to x, right? So how is the process again? We just need to increase the power by 1, right? So 1 plus 1, and then divided by the new power, 1 plus 1 is 2. So if you simplify it, it becomes 2x squared over 2, which is x squared. But since everybody is 2x, we know this the reverse of this one is also x squared. And the reverse of this one is also x squared. So we check back with the answers. The original is x squared plus 7, x squared plus 1, and x squared plus 0. But why is it when we integrate it, we only have the x squared? Where is all the constant goes? Can you see that? When we carry out the integrations, the constant is actually disappear in the middle of the process. So all the all the constant disappear. So it's why they tell us that if we take the integrations of a functions when there's no limit involved, which is this called as the indefinite integrations, we need to plus back the constant. We use c to represent the constant of integrations. So this is why we need to plus back the constant. So basically, they tell us that if you're going to take the integration of a function when no limit is involved, we're going to do the reverse of it plus back the constant. We will learn how to find the constant later on in this chapter. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more video like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.